it has gotten freaking cold, all right? We are bundled up. Later on, I'm gonna do a whole cold weather series on like how I dress for things like this, all right? Because to be comfortable out here, you kinda gotta be able to, to, to dress appropriately. We turn it down. Uh, anyways, I had some guys ask me, what are two holes and how do you use the two holes? Now, in the videos before this, uh, I talked about the Matthew Deerman set of two hole pins and stuff. Well, I got a set of two hole pins right here and this whole piece is kind of set up. And I'm going to have Jared grab the camera and kind of show you what we got going on here. Okay guys, so what you can see right now is I've got a threadlet stuck on the middle of this piece. It's just a bleed is all this is. Six inches, six inch pup, threadlet, and uh, that's all we got. But what happens is with this threadlet, you have got to two hole this. You've got to basically level it between these pieces, between this flange, between these two holes right here. The reason being is because when they go to bolt this up, if, if your two holes are tweaked out this way, and this piece is going this way. When they go to bolt it up, it don't. It's not level. It's not plumb level square. That's what you guys need to keep in mind all the time. Plumb level square. All right. <coughs> um, unless otherwise specified in the prints. So that's what we're building. We're putting two flanges on both sides of this, and uh, that's how it's going to be. So what we did is we've got we've got our uh, threadlet right here. Take a level. And we want to check this way first, all right? So we've leveled it already. We've locked in the uh, the rollout wheel. Now what we got is our two hole pins actually go in. And uh, let me grab you a couple different examples. So this is a three inch 300. Pick two holes, all right? Don't, if you go this hole and this hole, you one hold it. Meaning when you level this out, the one hole is gonna be level, all right? That's no good. So you want to pick just the two holes closest to each other, put your pins in it, and, and that is what you're going to be leveling to. So that right there is probably the easiest way to explain it. Pick the two holes right next to each other, put your pins in it, and then level from there, all right? That is a two hole. That makes sure that when you go to bolt this up to like a valve out there or a piece of equipment out there, that it is plumb level square when it all goes in. Put your two holes in which are my pins right here, and then um, then throw you a level over it. Now what happens is all you're gonna do is you're just gonna get the high low knocked out of the out of this piece of pipe right here, which Jared's already done a really good job at. <coughs> um, and then you're just gonna square it up. We're just gonna square that up. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing set up and we're gonna tack it right now. Guys, the other thing I use is a spacer. I just use a hacksaw blade. It's a super simple spacer. So I just throw that in there, make sure everything's lined up, rotate my two holes to where everything's squared up and good. Just run the attack. Now, Jared, come over here and get the, the bubbles. Show them what the bubbles are doing. Okay. Okay, now you guys can tell that this is good. Uh, and then we look back here. Let me see if I can get that thing. thing. There we go. You can see it, so, yeah. Okay, so anyway, so these are both, the bubbles in my levels are both square, all right? It's important to do it that way. Okay, now we're done with the two holes. We've got our first tack in. Everything is two holes to the uh, thread of lead right now, which is important. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna square this thing up with the piece of pipe now. Okay, take your spacer out, because that would suck, because you'd never get it out again, you'd have to cut some tacks. So what we're doing, Get rid of the jack stand. We don't need it no more. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out. So we know that this, is, that the two holes are two holes to the thread elect already. Uh, take you a level. Now what we got to do is we got to make sure that this flange is sitting exactly where it needs to be to the pipe. <coughs> now when we're running little 
little pieces of pipe like this, these little tiny uh, stability levels are freaking awesome. I'm going to start putting links down at the bottom of these videos. I'm probably going to have to come back later on and do it. But there will be a link on where you can find these and what levels and things I use. So that you guys can start getting your own tools and start, you know, tooling your own stuff up with things that, that I know that work. So what we're doing is we're going to get this piece of pipe, we're going to run the rollout wheel up or down, whichever direction it needs to go, until we get this piece of pipe where it needs to be. Okay, now we know that this, that this flange has got to go in. Boom. All right. So you don't want to run real big tacks on the top because it'll make it super hard for you to, to be able to move these things around. Jared, you want to push on that just a little? Okay guys, now the other thing you got to remember is when you go to push on something, you want to leave it just a hair bit up on the, on the high side because as that weld goes in, it's going to start pulling it and it'll pull it square. Good? Yep. Beautiful. All right, we are squared up. We know that that, piece, that that flange is square to this piece of pipe. <coughs> now what we got to do is we got to check the other direction. So we've already checked straight up and down. Now we got to check side to side. All right. Which in the rollout wheel is super easy because all we're going to do is just rotate it. Rotate it 180 degrees. Throw that little level up there. Make sure your pipe's square. We're good. Now we know that this flange has got to go down. The bubble's riding up, all right? You guys, bubble's float. Okay, now as you beat on these and start to get these things level, you're gonna start moving it. It'll start to kind of rock its way out of your rollout wheel, which you gotta be kind of careful about. So we went too far on it. Sometimes you, you, you go too far and then when you pull that wedge out, it'll come right back to where it needs to be. <clears throat> now we know that this thing is riding just a little bit up. So what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to weld this whole side right here, which that weld's going to bring that thing down and shrink it. It's not a lot, but it's enough. So I just take a soapstone. Sometimes if I'm like in a hurry, I'll just run a soapstone, run me a mark right there. And I know that that side needs to be welded first. So Jared's going to hit the starts real quick, and then we're going to go ahead and run a bead in this in this whole thing. Then we're going to flip it around and put it back in the back in the chuck and put the other flange on. And then we're going to go ahead and two hole it too. So I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. This thing's been rotated around. I got my little white mark. I know which side we need to weld first, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get that side welded together. I like to get my start where I started off and went to go tie into that tack because what happens is it leaves a big ball on top. And if you go to start running into that tack and it just keeps cutting, eventually you're going to hit that ball. Like basically this is going to be the ball and you're going to hit it and it's going to just stop and, and leave you a suck back right there. So I like to grind that to where that can just keep cutting, keep cutting until it just closes up. The cool thing about it is, no that's good is I can kind of tell you guys what amps I'm running right now. Now we're running three inch schedule 40 pipe. Uh, it's got a 150 pound flange on it. And uh, to run my root in and all my tacks, I'm at 124 amps with a 5P plus eighth inch rod. That's kind of neat. Never been able to really do that with my Lincolns because I've always ran gears. And I can tell you where your gears need to be set and, and, then, all, uh, and then where from 10 to 100 can be set, you know? 
All right, guys, so now what you can see right here is Jared threw a level back onto this uh, threadlet. Now, what should be, what should have happened is this threadlet should be too hold to this flange, all right? It should be perfectly level and everything's good, but sometimes there are mistakes. So, there is ways to, uh, to check this, and, and when you're tying in two flanges together, because right now this is a bleed valve. This is what this is gonna be, is a bleed. <clears throat> you're gonna have two flanges on both sides of this. Do not rely on the thread alet to make sure that your two holes are perfect, all right? Always two hole off of your flanges, which is, which will make sure that everything bolts up right. What's up, Davey? What's up? What's happening, man? Okay, so what we got put together already, we've already got this two hold. This was perfectly two hold to this thread alet. So that was nice. That's freaking, that's ideal. <laughs> so uh, right now, Jared's got this other flange put up here. We're gonna go ahead and throw our two hole pins in here. A lot of guys don't use two hole pins. A lot of guys will just use this method where they, they throw the level up and uh, the bottom of the level touches the very top of the two holes and that's how they two hole. It's super fast and uh, Super easy, but I've had pieces come back to where uh, maybe, maybe it wasn't quite right, you know what I mean? So so I like to use a two-hole pin just to make sure that everything is fitting up the way it needs to fit up. guys on here that like oh my gosh I took forever for you to fit that guys I'm also trying to explain things to you all right so come on let me think about it before you open your mouth think about what you are going to say okay guys so what I'm doing right now I'm leveling it my two holes, I'm making sure that the level is, is uh, perfectly level across them two holes. That one's two holes good. Jared, I need a spacer. Yeah. All right, we're tacked. Everything stayed level. Boom, good. Get rid of this. For all you guys that don't have two, uh, a rollout wheel yet, that is an incredible investment. Now, I'm going to try to do a video on how to build one. You can build one for a lot cheaper than you can buy one. But at the same time, uh, I love my rollout wheel. It's a great rollout wheel. It's from Off the Hook Welding uh, from Darren Hughesby. And the thing is awesome. A lot of my buddies run them, and they're just a great freaking rollout wheel. But you are going to spend some money on one. <clears throat> the prices have gone up on them. They're about eleven hundred dollars for one now. Up, up. But hands down, it's probably one of the better investments you can make. Definitely for your welding career. And, uh, it just makes life easy. Jed runs a rollout wheel and he's a structural welder. You can fit I-beam and, and uh, angle iron, all sorts of things. You can put your base plates in them. And it just they're just great rollout wheels. Or a great tool to have. up just a hair on this which is perfect we're gonna go ahead and weld this offside first and we don't want it to pull so much that it's gonna throw it out of whack all right Jerry we need to grind up those starts and then we're gonna go ahead and beat it throw it on the ground and we're gonna get the other two up and then we're just gonna time lapse these but that's that's how you guys are gonna go ahead and fit these up hopefully that explained the two hole good enough that you understand it so everybody be blessed like subscribe comment